matter of the approach and the essence. Uh, yes. Amplify the voices of the communities. Can you hear? Yes, you froze a little bit there, but uh, you're back with us. Yeah, I'm on 4G. Huh? I'm in Brazil, um, but not in a big city. So I hope this works. Um, okay, so PV, uh, before we can, Kristen, do, do you think we can, first of all, hello to everyone. I know some of you. <laughs> Lana, I know, I think Kevin, we've exchanged uh, some of the platforms, I'm not sure, um, the other ones in the room, but uh, nice to see you all. Um, I, I know that some of you are in the field right now, so I wish you good work. Um, do your best. <laughs> I think that's our mantra. We do our best with what we can. Um, okay, so do you want to, maybe I, I am going to read one paragraph about the methodology and then we can play the video and then I can com come back to some of the theoretic points and then we can open up for chat because I want to, to do a blend. And I can share after some resources, like there's a guide, there's a tool guide um, published by Inside Share. I can just do a separate email sharing some resources for those who, who would like to check more. So participatory video is a methodology uh, and it's also a communications with communities and a participatory communications tool. It's recommended by CDAC, um, which is communicating uh, with disasters affected community. I'm also a, a member of the roster or the pool of experts. And it's in the, one of the key points is enables and empowers affected communities, not only to amplify their voices, but to reflect, reflect on their own needs, voices, priorities. Um, um, so it's about a reflection and then identifying themselves, what are the key messages that they would like to communicate uh, through a video. And then whatever they decide that they want to film, they will direct and film their own narratives and stories in the way that they perceive it's more appropriate to portray their own realities. So it's a very bottom-up approach. Us as facilitators, we're just enabling that what, what that means, for instance, in practice, when we start the first step of the method, the, the facilitator steps away or out of the circle. We use a circle and we put the bags of the equipment in the center of the circle and us, we step away, we, we get out of the circle. So, so it starts right there. Um, and the communities or the, the members of that process, they will themselves discover the equipment. So it's not about me handing a camera over to anyone and showing how it works. It's about them opening up the um, equipments and starting to explore. So, so by that, they start gaining confidence on their own processes and on their voices as well. Because when they get the microphone, for example, and they start exploring, uh, the first things that they will probably talk about, you know, some people like in South Sudan, we had a, a beautiful experience with IOM actually. Um, one lady picked up the microphone and started singing. So not necessarily they will start the first step of, of getting to know what that microphone they might, that microphone can do uh, is going to be about talking or, or, or talking about themselves or their issues. So that's why it's a process. And usually, I mean, I've, I've done more than 40 processes of PV in around 30 countries, just to give you the scope. Like of, and I, I am experienced, okay, but I'm not like the only one very experienced. There are other colleagues out there that are experienced as well on this method. And and in case anyone would like to study this or to to get trained, Inside Share is where I got trained in 2008. It's it's one of the best ways to get trained in PV. Um, okay, so coming back to the process, then. Um, and this has not started now, you know, I just want to give you some background and I will share, as I said, the, the, some of the bibliography about it. But this, this method has started in 1967, actually. This was first discovered and documented. Um, I'm not going to go into the history here, uh, but it was in Newfoundland, Newfoundland in Canada, and it was used as a method 
uh, to promote dialogue between fishing communities that were having um, conflicts because of the fishing area. So, so the video is ve video is very powerful as a means to 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 bring to dialogue between communities. Um, so many organizations has has okay. I want to give a, a first uh, definition. I'm I'm aware of the time. One definition, which is the one that I like most, because there there are more than ten definitions. Uh, or even more, is a scriptless video production process directed by community members moving forward in interactive cycles of shooting, reviewing, and aiming at creating video narratives that communicate what those who participate in the process really want to communicate in a way that they think is appropriate. And this is Maneno, Maneno and Menji, 1999. So maybe I would like to invite um, for us to watch the three minute clip for you to have an idea. Uh, and then I can come back and maybe just finish off saying what are some, some of the uh, potential applications for humanitarian sector. Will I play it? Um... Can you play it? Yeah. Exactly, I can do that. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, maybe okay. just make it a uh, bigger. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay, here we go. I think we have no sound, right? Yeah, there's no sound for me also. Ah, okay. If Sorry. there's no sound, it's okay, huh? But try, try again because we can we can watch the images because it's a sound. Because track. I can hear it, but okay. It's a beautiful song in the background at the minute. <laughs> maybe you can circulate the video later, but maybe let's just Absolutely. play it and okay. Yeah. So that's the part that they learn. Maybe I'm just going to narrate. And then the, this is how they're training to stand with the microphone. So they they go into their day-to-day -day scenes. And that this is when they discuss and define their messages. This is done collectively. So here we are using voting. And then they start organizing and directing their, their stand, their scenes. And they're helping each other all the time. And this is the participatory editing process, which is the final or semi-final one. So editing is done by communities representatives, which are usually uh, appointed because we. Uh, and here is watching all all the members that participated, watching their own film after the editing. And in this process specifically, which was done in partnership with UN Women and Kashka they received a, a certification. Am I frozen again? No, it's clear for me. Okay. Okay, so, okay, this is a very important part. Let's just listen to, uh, let's just read what she says. So she's saying basically that the message that we say here in Maji 1, this is, this is north of Uganda, it appears here in the discussions of the world. So that's how they sum up how they want to be integrated. OK. Sorry. So this was used, and now I'm just going to jump into the use, and then I'll, I'll shut up. Can I just do uh, two, two, three more minutes? Is that OK? Yes, can absolutely. We open up for questions. We can open up for discussions, right? It's, it's more interesting. So this this one was used or the application. So I'm going to move now to the to the potential applications, different applications. 
Um, this one was specifically for accountability. So we were there assessing with those community members um, the impact of cash assistance in their daily lives. And so not only the impact, but also what were the recommendations and what were the gaps in terms of the whole operation process. Um, so this was the macro theme, uh, macro theme, which was, of course, decided by, by the partners. But how they dive into their team, this theme is decided by them. Uh, so that's, that's the difference, the biggest difference of a participatory, a true, legitimate, <laughs> meaningful participatory approach and not a participatory approaches that are actually not really participatory because that the, the questions and, and the end goals are predefined by agencies and partners. And, and there you already uh, direct um, which way you want them to go. So, so that was for accountability. Uh, there, there done actually three projects with IFRC. Um, actually, I will share this, this document as well because it, it's, it's published. Um, which the title was, are we ready to engage communities in programming decision-making? Uh, so we were assessing using PV as a method to assess um, a program and, or a project. So there's a whole method for that. We call PV for the most significant change stories. Uh, so it's a quite documented method. So it's blended with PV. So yeah, uh, it's definitely not used for visibility. Um, I've had to draw on many lines and sometimes not really became not really popular with some some people that were trying to hire me because I am I am, I am the community gatekeeper. That's that's my role with the PV facilitation. So you need to push the lines, you need to draw the lines. And for that, what is very key is to have a very import, very solid. And, and, and comprehensive TOR that is written by the expert and not by the agency, because often the agencies, they will leave out important elements such as the editorial control, which remains with the communities. So yeah, I'll end here. And you know, I'm here to answer any questions or even li listen to your comments. Any questions, anyone? I have a question. I can start um, if that's OK, uh, Fernanda. Sure. Um, so um, uh, you were saying this as I was facing out the video and I was actually hearing the music. So you might have said this already, um, but you're mentioning how they had to have complete editorial control and selection of the topic, but are there any criteria? It this kind of links in with the community led projects um, uh, discussions that we've had lately in the community engagement forum, like um, the balance between you know, criteria, not necessarily from the donor side, but just making sure that it's, for example, for the community led projects, that it's community led and not doesn't benefit just one person. Um, but also then making sure it's participatory and not having too many criteria. Um, so are there any criteria? I can talk about quickly about, because I, I, I cannot present the whole method here, all the steps, right? But one of the steps, it's called the editorial wall or editorial board. Um, so before they go into um, filming, uh, it depends because uh, uh, there's nuances of the method. I'm not going to go too much here on details. But for example, in South Sudan with IOM, um, we, we, IOM decided to use this method um, to support the, their psychosocial support activities, which is very interesting because it's dialogue. So we worked with 20 people that were part of IOM's psychosocial support program. So that means that 
um, we had also assistance uh, from PC PSS, P uh, Psychosocial Support PSS, in the room with us. So they had briefed us in the beginning, me, me and my colleague Amanda Nero, who was uh, there with me from IOM, because she was HQ and I was hired to support her and support the teams. So their worry was we cannot go into, how can we avoid re-trauma, right? Going to those discussions. So what we did is we discussed along with them, uh, these editorial lines. So they created the editorial line. So for example, they built a, like a wall, a wall and they wrote um, saying, we want to talk or focus about the solutions and we don't wanna go into talking about our, uh, the death of our loved ones and et cetera. But this was a process that they arrived. It was not us imposing. So it mm -hmm. takes time. It took about two hours to build it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not That's, a criteria, yeah. but but yeah, but you can use those guidelines. And we use that we use that in Jordan as well. We 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 have a few examples where we used. Go ahead, mm -hmm. sorry. Kevin. Yes, um, thanks, Fernanda. And I think this is very interesting, cool idea. A um, long time ago, I got my bachelor's degree in film and video. So I'm always interested in people using video for things like this. Uh, my question or what I wanted to say, I think you mentioned it, but very briefly when you were starting your presentation, Fernanda, uh, I guess what's the what's the point in the simplest term? Is it to help them process something? Is it just creative expression? Is it, yeah, I think you mentioned it, but it was so fast. And in the beginning, I, I missed this, you know, uh, what's the purpose of the participatory video um, methodology, I guess. Um, and the second question is, what if the idea they come up with is very lighthearted, like we just want to do a video of us dancing, or we want to do some something fun. Is that okay? Or is it usually like trying to tackle more substantial issues or something? But very cool idea. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not my idea, right? You know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I was just passionate about the method. In yeah, fact, but I never was... heard about it before. So I'm saying it's like, it's a yeah. cool idea. Yeah, no, it's a very cool method, by the way. Actually, I, I got to know this method, just a, a parenthesis, uh, through Red Cross in 2007, actually, with Pablo Suarez. He was a visionary. Actually, I ended up doing my thesis research at that time with them in Malawi to test the method, to verify pre and post uh, in terms of the efficiency of the method to transfer community-based um, community climate change adaptation practice between villages. So it's not only that documented the method, not only by me, but uh, by other researchers and practitioners. Uh, and two communities uh, tool. So, the, uh, okay, there are many, many reasons why, but one of the most, it's a process. Um, it's, a part it's a participation process that activates so, or potentially can activate social change. So this social change is individually and collectively. Uh, it's also an empower, empowering tool. For example, I worked with women in, in, in refugee camps, which they were leaders uh, or they were entitled as leaders or uh, block leaders, but they could never speak out in the big, big uh, camp um, meetings because either they were afraid to put their hands up or they were not heard. So we trained with UN women and, and, and their local partners in, in, in Uganda specifically, them using, we, we, we trained them to be good speakers through the method. So the different applications depends on, on the program, but it's very empowering. And I can, as I said, it's hard for me to explain, which is something to be experienced. So I can share later a few more examples um, for you to, to, to grasp a little bit more, Kevin. Cool. 
Okay. And uh, did I, did you answer that? What if they just want to do something, let's say not related to social um, change or these sorts of things? Is that part of the guidelines that Kristen was mentioning or requirements? It has to be on a, a topic like this. Look, the singing and dancing, especially in, in cultures such as Africa, you know, different countries in, in, in different cultures and ethnics, it's very, uh, they, I, I can't tell you how many footage, how much footage I have of them singing and dancing. But usually we plug in the singing and dancing. If they want to start by singing and dancing, we're not there to say yes or no. But mm. the, the, the thematic, remember, when we go into the theme, when we when we open up, um, okay, in Colombia, also with with Cash Cap, we went there and we went to a, a refugee um, Venezuelan uh, settlement uh, neighborhood, kind of in the border with Venezuela and Colombia, and we explain to the community leaders, we 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 call them on a you know, semi-urban setting. And, and we presented this for them if they wanted to give feedback for us humanitarians. So that was a macro theme. So it was, it was very tailored for that purpose. And whoever wanted to participate said, you know what, I'm signing up for this because I have a lot to say. So it all depends on, on but for example, Inside Chair, they're very purist. Um, so they have, uh, video hubs with Maasai communities, for example, and they have left the equipment behind, which is different the way I operate. Um, I'm not saying that it's not good. It's great to leave equipment behind, but it's not my purpose. It's another programming. But they leave, uh, they, they, they help the Maasai build the community's video hubs. So these Maasai groups, they feed inside share with, with constant production and inside share puts out in platforms. So it's a different purpose. And then it, there, it's more free, let's say, mm, but depends on, on the program actually. But for us in humanitarian sector, um, I think for me particularly, I, I like to use very much for empowering. So that's always there. Uh, training um, to become better leaders and especially women and other minorities as well. I've worked with youth as well. And then bringing back these recommendations to the humanitarian sector, which is very different than written, you see? Because when you hear it, it's more powerful. Yeah, but oh. I, I, can, I can talk for, for hours here. I have to shut up now. <laughs> Lana has a question, I think. Yes, Elena. I do. Thank you so much. And uh, I have like three, maybe four questions, but uh, super quick. Uh, how many um, how many times do you have to get back to the communities? Like the whole process, you mentioned that the first uh, like the first contact that they have with the cameras, they take they took two hours, but to have to finish, like to conclude the whole process, this circle, how many times did you have to get back to the community and how did this could reflect uh, in the project itself? Um, the second question would be, could you track the um, outcomes or the results or the benefits to the community after, I don't know, a year or three three months or after six months because i know that our project as well it's not longer than six months a year uh, it's a pity it's a shame uh, and i think the community engagement forum uh, christian this is for you uh, the community engagement forum should like advocate for longer projects for communities uh, community engagement uh, projects and uh, where can we find more projects like that like uh, which organizations or uh which uh, places in the world could we see because you mentioned that you're not the only one so i wish i could uh, see more I, I i follow your your work uh, a long time so i can see you uh you working on that but i i wish i could see more people like you and the fourth question would be will you translate your book to english and other languages <laughs> The question. Uh, by the way, Lana, um prazer estar com você de novo. Sorry, just a little Portuguese. Yeah. 
Um, okay, how many times? Um, depends. I've done projects, PV projects. Um, what I recommend is a six days. Okay, so six days. Six days depends on. For example, if I like in South Sudan, which I mentioned, I was I was I was in Malakau camp. So you know, going to the community and back. Uh, we, we had a schedule of six days workshop, half day. We negotiate, actually, we define the agenda of the workshop with the communities at the first time, at the first day. So it's a participatory from day one. So it's not, okay, we're imposing here the agenda. Okay, this is what we would like to do with you guys. Do you want to do this? Some people say, you know what? I thought it was a different thing. I'm not really, you know, and they step away, you know? So, so this is the level of participation we want. And then when we build the agenda, I present the steps, the key steps. And then I said, Let's, look, ideally we would go about like this, but is, is this too much? Do you wanna move to the afternoon? So we build the agenda together, okay? So, so I say five, five entries without the, the first zero. So five days, let's put over half days or three hours a day before we have the consultation which is very important because you have to consult the communities. And I've done different ways. And my lesson learned is that the best way to consult community is us on the ground already. Because when we consult the community, we show the, the equipment. That's very important because they cannot grasp it without the equipment, what it is. So usually in Uganda, this video that we, we, we ran, I, I took the, the, the huge circle of women we had like 25 women. I took the equipment I put in the center and I said, who wants to try it out? That's how we explain the activity. But then we, we scheduled to start four days later. Another thing that we have, we have, to, we have to take in, into account is who's gonna stay with kids in such settings. So we always take care of that as well. In Uganda, another uh, Uganda with host communities, we had the kids in the back of the room, but we had toys there, we had things for them, you see? So, so, so that's something also important, especially working with women. But I would say that my craziest process was with, uh, I'm not gonna name the agency, but one agency that was very speedy, we were in a Karamoja region, very far away from everything. And they're saying like, Fernanda, forget it. You're not gonna go five times. You have six hours to do it. I'm saying, six six hours to do it you know so I was caught off guard I had to do it in in six hours you it's not something that I liked but it turned out that it was a very you know it came out well it was a pv by the way about cassava uh the inter the adoption of cassava um to for, for food security very interesting and they wanted to film the steps of planting the cassava to take to other villages in order to, for them to adopt because they were very resistant. So interesting angle as well for food security. Track outcomes and results, very hard, um, very hard. Depends on the project. For example, the PV for evaluation. So you're using it to evaluate the program. So you're not using it as a, as a constant, okay? But in Peru, uh, I was with Ocha, we used in camps uh, for recommendations for the reconstruction phase because it was uh, post flooding and then it entered into recovery, reconstruction of the government. Blah, blah. So we used uh, to, to feedback, to project those voices of certain communities in certain camps into the big meeting and this is where we, we, we create a bridge into the big meetings of a municipality, local government. We wanted them to hear straight from the community. So we use for that. So depends on the, on the angle, on the purpose, then you can track it or not, or it's less trackable. Uh, more projects, inside share. I will, I will share an email separated to Kristen so you can take a look, Kristen, you can filter and then, but inside share is one, but you can also just do parts of participatory video on Google. You, you, will see me, you, will see, you will see probably a lot. And there are more than 10 books published with many, many there's so much out there on it. Um, translate my book into English. 
This is my book, by the way. And it's actually talking about participatory video projects in humanitarian settings and how difficult it is sometimes to um, to uh, reach communities. Like I had some some countries I had to uh, meet with 18 layers, 18 layers in order to get authorization in order to bring the cameras and microphones to communities. Like, you know, so my book is, is also, I mean, I don't mention the names of the agencies, of course. I'm not going to go into a firing myself out of the system. No plans for English for now. I, I have to first get solid in Brazil. I just launched it. Thank you, over. <laughs> Congratulations on Anyone the else? The book. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Two years plan. I mean, two it's something years, I forgot to mention in the in the introduction, but um, I think you launched it last week or something. Yeah. World yeah, Humanitarian well Day. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well done. Yeah. Do anyone else have so, questions? What, yeah. Yeah, Ule, Abraham, do you have, you're there. I mean, do you have any, anything maybe, you know, or even, you know, criticism, like, okay, this would never work here, you know, uh, and, and it's fine. In some contexts, it's, it's, it's difficult, like conflict, for example, right? Yeah, no, not really. I'm just taking notes and I'm, I, I feel that there, there are some things that are coming to my head, but when I have them packed, I would talk to Christy, maybe I'll get across to you. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Fernanda, if, if, um, like if I'm working with um, Abraham now, Hamza, um, in Nigeria, and we want to use it to hear from women, because mm -hmm. the example you were using, um, um, they can't speak up. So exactly the same mm -hmm. uh, scenario. Um, uh, like how do we go about it? Do, do we? So for example, we work for NRC as an NGO. Like mm -hmm. do we? Do 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 we um, contact? I don't know, OCHA, do we Google participatory video? What what do we do? Look, I, I don't know what you, you, I mean, I just, what I can say is what I've learned, how agencies do. do. Usually they hire consultants. Um, I'm, I'm not promoting my work here, not at any point, but but very important. When you hire a consultant, or if you hire a consultant, it's important to include on the TOR that this consultant will train and transfer the method to the comms people on the ground. This is what I've done with IOM. Uh, this was in the TOR. Actually, it was something I suggested because of the sustainability factor of it. So we actually quite created quite a positive impact in the comms, traditional comms people, in order to plant some seeds for them to, um, I'm not saying that they will become bottom up, but at least to, to become a little bit more participatory when they go out and interview people, such as, for example, include what they want to say, include something about recommendation, you know, about feedback, just not just ask what is going well, you know, because that's promotion. But, you know, use it as also to listen to what they want to say, you know. So I think, yeah, you can also do another way. You can identify in your team if there's anyone that is keen in video making has because you have to be have the skills, you have to have the equipment and then train this person with inside chair. For example, they can do remote training because mm -hmm. they do some trainings. And then, and then it do, do a pilot, you know, that's another way to do it. Or bring a consultant to work with this person that you mm -hmm. identify to, to take it to the next level, you know, there are different ways. Okay, great. Maybe I think there's the HNO, the, um, um, what's the HNO, have humanitarian needs? Um, overview. Overview, thank you. Um, process. Uh, going on in many countries now. Imagine if this could be part of it and feeding into uh, the needs overview. That would be amazing. And, uh, yeah, maybe next I, year. Ha I had some of those battles. I had some of those battles when I was uh, in coordination a few times, but it's very even hard, you know, to include the focus group discussions, you know. 
because they're so focused on quantitative matter, method. I think just going, just to wrap up, you know, I think before we push PV because it's really a very innovative tool, okay? But maybe we should advocate for more qualitative methods, you know? So within the qualitative methods, you know, at least not to, to go just on numbers, we need quality, right? And then within the quality, if there's open a, openness for quality, and then we can explore a participatory method within the quality methods. I would go like that. Fair enough, yeah. Um, um, Walid has a question. Um, Walid, I'll be do brief. you want to? Um, hmm? I'll be brief, I promise. Oh, no, 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 I mean, we can also listen to this forever. Um, Walid, do you want to um, go ahead and ask or will I ask for you? Yeah, I can go ahead. Thank you. And thanks, Fernanda. Very, very interesting topic uh, indeed. Um, I wrote my question in a chat. I was wondering if you can give examples on, on how the participants were still like making decisions on and, and uh, after the production itself. So, for example, making um, decisions in terms of editing choices or uh, where they want they want their videos viewed. Uh, evaluating how much impact, etc. And if any challenges, it'd be interesting to hear from you. Thanks. Okay, very, very good question. Um, yeah, the PV only is out of the village or the community. Uh, we, we didn't talk about informed consent, but informed consent is within the process from the start. Starting from, do you want to participate? This is what it is. Then going to the circles of production. Do I want to speak? Do I don't want to speak? Okay, I spoke. Let me hear what I said. So the, the, the so there's consent again. Do you do you want to keep this or do we want to erase this? You know, so so the decision and the consent is throughout the whole process. When we reach the phase of final product in the editing room, which I am editing with them. I've edited with 20 people already. Editing sessions of seven hours, eight hours. Um, editing in Ethiopia with ge generator in 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 a in a tent, you know, different settings of editing. But sometimes uh, we go like in Uganda. I'm not going to go like too too long here, but for for the operational reasons, um, which includes um, security and, and and safeguarding, sometimes they have to appoint three members or always th always three, not two in order for them to discuss and decide. Uh, and then these three members, they come to our hub, either my hotel or, or the organization um, office to, to edit with me there. But once that editing is reached, the final product is reached, it goes back to the community as we saw in the video and they watch. And then there's the final consent. So the question is, and usually I record that. So. Is everyone comfortable with this? Do we need to change anything? So there are key questions to clear. Um, if you if you ask me, have you has it ever happened to to take ha, have to remove parts? Yes, two times in forty projects. Uh, pieces of certain people say, you know what, I'm not too comfortable about, th about this. Can you take out? So what I do is I I take out right there because this is important for trust. So I always have my editing gear. You open up and you go there. And, and sometimes I even ask the person to go there and delete in the program. You see? Because this is very important. OK. Then thoughts of, of this moment. It's very happy moments usually. Yes, take our voice. What they say, take our voice to the world. Then, of course, we manage the expectations at day zero. We're saying, hey, we're not promising here. If the, if you decide that this product will go out as a product, not a process, because the process has happened and it's empowering and it leaves uh, skills. But as a product, if you decide that this goes out, you will decide if we can publish, if we can circulate or not. So this discussion of platform reaching uh, or outreach is usually after the product. You, you touch it upon in the beginning, but you, you really consult clearly in the end. Um, and then the decision usually, you know, especially women, 
you know, they're like, take our voices out. They have to hear us. You know, we need to to have space in leadership in camp. In, you know, I've heard this so many times. You know, so so yeah. And we can also do recuts. You know, with their authorizations, because as as this clip that I showed you, this is a clip of a process. But the 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 PV of that process is 14 minutes. But that's just a clip to show donors. So, so yeah. I don't know if I answered, but the, the the decision is usually, you know, it has to be with them the whole time. So that's why you need facilitators that are really on the side of the community and not on the side of the agencies. I'm sorry to say that, guys, but it is. And that's one of the reasons I remain independent because you, it's very hard to resist the pressure, you see? Thanks, Fernanda. I love that you gave very practical um, answers and uh, and good tips. Um, Emmy also have a question. If you if you have time to still stay with us, Fernanda. Yeah, I do. Oh, all the time in the world, actually. Go I'm ahead, Emmy. Work, so. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Um, thank you so much, Fernanda. I'm so sorry that I was only able to join a bit late. Uh, but I first want to do share a reflection. Uh, Lana will resonate. <laughs> Lana will understand that a lot because we have been discussing what you just said a um, couple of minutes ago a lot recently with Lana. Um, so I completely agree that there's a huge. Um, I don't know if you can see my video. I don't know right now, but anyways. Um, okay, uh, there is a, the, I mean, we have been discussing a lot recently how much we are all obsessed with quantitative data and numbers and percentages. And we all think that qualitative methods first are not enough empirical based. Second, they are too complex to handle, which is completely a misconception. Um, and even I think most of us um, I mean, think that making something community based, oh my God, it's too complex. How are we going to manage it? Um, it's going to require so much effort, so much time. Uh, but it's, I believe that it's opposite. You know, it's, uh, yes, there are things that we need to consider, but I re really do think that when we make things community based, it really helps us to uh, facilitate and uh, facilitate a smooth process to have an easier access, to have much more accurate information in the end of the day and um, and more representation. So I completely, completely agree. I mean, even uh, considering how much it's difficult to convince people to run focus group discussions instead of surveys, I can't imagine the struggles that you had <laughs> convincing people to, to um, run this very creative methodology. Um, I again, sorry that I joined late and maybe I missed um, missed a bit, but I want to ask you, how did you mitigate the risks um, from the from the first stages, especially if you ever worked in context that um, can that might visible that visibility might people uh, put people in risk uh, to some extent. Um, like if you if you had any examples with that, and also probably you have mentioned before, but um, you mentioned the community engagement throughout the process, like how you with the consent. But how did you um, start this process? You know, like how did you start the engagement with them? Um, also considering the risks and hesitations that might come from the communities. Thank you. Hey, Emily, thanks for your questions. It's quite uh, OK. I'm going to try to be brief here. Um, I worked in different settings, uh, one being hired and brought in to run PVs. So that means that agencies were already keen to do it, right? I'm not going to say how, how much long it took them to decide and how much I had to advocate and what were the influential factors okay but this is one scenario okay then the other scenario is when i'm deployed as a communications um as a, a cea community engagement and accountability officer 
uh, not advisor, because usually advisor, you're very away from the, the ground. But when I was deployed as officer by NORCAP to different settings, that I was there in a response for four months or five months or three months. I always had my equipment with me because my plan was would always be, let's try to plug this in. But then, then this is a different context, okay? But I've done both. Um, so the risk aspects is, is, is evaluation differs as well. So I think the one of the most, first of all, okay, it's very important. Do you hear me? Okay, the, the people themselves, when you explain the method, you have to go into the risks element. So let me give you a practical example of working with survivors of women trafficker, trafficking, women survivors in Madagascar. They wanted to do this because they wanted to prevent other women to fall into the, the same trap but they did not want to show their faces, okay? So we came up with creative methods to counter those risks and not more than risks, their desire. We don't want to reveal our, our, our identities. So we came up with creative methods. I can share this video later as well in my list that they, they, we worked with, with with different elements of lightning, of, of creative elements that they never revealed um, their faces. Only two actually revealed their faces because they wanted to. And they were not talking about anything that they felt it was dangerous. They were just doing reflections, okay? So this is very important. In Afghanistan, okay, this, this one. This is Marianne. She's in my book, actually. Um, you know, she came from a, this is 2018, pre-Taliban. This She came from a Taliban zone. So she was an IDP in Herat, um, living in a camp. And she came to participate because she wanted her voice heard, but she never talked uh, without her burqa, right? Um, there were other women in the room with jihabs, but they were speaking with the back to the camera. And also we did something to distort a little bit the audio. So, and never informing their, their identity, of course. So there, 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 there are ways, not necessarily to hear and to amplify the voice, you need to show the face. It can be quite impactful as well. Mm, I don't know if I answered, um, but me as a, as a facilitator, one of the lessons learned you know, so if someone calls me, okay, let's discuss, let's exp exploratory conversation about the feasibility of this project, this idea that we have in mind. So this would be the first step, right? Uh, so it's a usually, a, you know, a discussion like this, then I'm going to hear it, and I'm going to recommend, I'm going to say, you know what, in this setting, I think, you know, we better go this way, you know, so, so I think that's why you, you also need someone with experience in order, but, but one thing is planning, the other thing is when you hit the ground. And often there's a difference, as you know. So to be flexible, in fact, in the TOR, there is one element, I mean, this TOR, what I'm saying is that years of experience of hitting my face in the wall many times, you know, then you, you, begin, you begin adding things in the TOR. One of the things is that things can change on the ground, you know, and the call is from the facilitator, of course, operational discussions as well, but it needs to be, um, you know, evaluating risk all the time, especially in conflict zones, huh? because in other places such as, uh, you know, I worked, I used CCCM setting in Ecuador, floods, uh, earthquake response in 2016. We use PV uh, in order to communicate to the authorities, the priorities and recommendations of women's leaders in camps, which was really powerful because we projected those videos not only in the camps, in the tents, but we projected in the coordination meetings. And it ended up that one of the women came to the coordination women a meeting to communicate better after the video, just as a presenting the video and saying, as you can see, you know, this is the priorities. So you can also plug, uh, plug the video with coordination meetings 
and bringing communities in, in, in Rio. That's amazing. Um, and Fernanda, I posted in the chat the, um, um, the link to the video that, um, um, that you shared just here um, during the introduction or the presentation, and also the link to your channel on Vimeo. Is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah on Vimeo, you can, you will find many PVs there, many. Yeah, but but I I really encourage you also to look other other facilitators such as Inside Chair and also just Google it. Mm -hmm. You will see different things. Yeah. And for the resources that you've been mentioning, um, you can post them directly on the community engagement forum, Fernanda, if you want, um, or you can send them to me and I can do it. It's that's up to you. Um, but uh, we can definitely I will send it, it to you. I will send yeah. it to you, and then you can screen it. But I will try to send the CCCM examples as well uh, for yeah. camps, for 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 communities, it's, it, um, leaderships. It's it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think it is for this group of people as well. Um, I think we have to um, um, to to um, Wrap up. round up the meeting um, as we're approaching the hour. Um, any last comments or questions from the participants? Any last comments uh, from you, Fernanda? Yeah, I think um, Cash Camp. Uh, I just want to men mention Cash again because Cash in the digital era of Cash, what I've been seeing uh, is a lot of mm, there's things that needs to get better. Let's put it this way, in terms of the vulnerability, the criteria, you know, the eligibility criteria, how we communicate with people are, that are selected, with people that are not selected. You know, I've been seeing things that, mm, you know, can get really better, you know, in terms of accountability. So Cash Cap, we did this pilot in 2019 and they came out, came out with a recommendations and guideline, which is published. It's called Dialogue, Meaningful Dialogue with Communities for Cash. So I would also recommend uh, if anyone is working with cash assistance, this is, of course, it's 2019. It's a little bit before the digital uh, scaling up of cash, but I think there are some key elements there. I will also send it to you, Kristen. Mm -hmm. um, brilliant. Yeah. Thanks a million. Anything that you can think of, please do share with us, um, with me, and I will share wider. Um, and thanks so much. For joining Thank us today you. and uh, yeah i love this uh, methodology and it's great that you could share it with us and uh, yeah well done on everything that you've done and uh, best of luck in the future and and yes yeah just for all of us you know let's not i mean seriously community engagement and accountability when done from within the agencies it's always going to be a battle y you need to know that you know, so the frustration level is is we have a reality check. It's it's about frustration. You know, if you're really into community engagement and accountability, so it's about doing small steps instead of just focusing on the ideal. You know, I, I would say yeah. just what I've learned. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a great tip um, to live with. Um, thanks, a million. Thanks to all of you who who joined us and for your questions and for your comments. Um, I'll share the recording with you as well on the forum. And uh, if you have any requests or wishes for our upcoming sessions, then just write to me and we'll talk. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Kristen. Thank Thanks, Fernando. Bye. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks Thank you. for your experience. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. You. So I'll finalize my note and get back to you, Kristen. I'm not talking to you. Yeah, oh my God.